The boys are back in town. They're back in town. What's up, people? And welcome back to <laughs> another episode of Channel Tasers. I have been waiting to use that pretty much since that second season was announced. Of course. But yes. Of course you'd go with that intro. <laughs> but yes, in fact, the boys are back in town. Both Brian and I, because we took a week off, because there wasn't really anything um, out, and I was going somewhere, um, and, you know, The Boy Season 2 has officially ended, and my god, what a season it was. But of course, as always, I am your host, Jay, from TV Time with Jay, and joining me as always is my friend, my co-host, and self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, party people. Oh, boy. Good to be back, but also, what? Yeah, it's some wild, wild shit we've got here, folks. Especially that so, ending. I won't say yep. anything spoilery, but just that ending? Yeah, so The Boys is a show that I, you know, have been waiting about 10 years for. Um... They've been talking about making this show since about 09, maybe 2010-ish. Um, and it came out, I want to say, last year? Two years ago? About two years ago now? I think so. Um, I think it was last year. Uh, yeah. Like maybe two years last ago. Last year, yeah, last year, a year and a half ago, somewhere around there. But anyway, I was thoroughly blown away as a fan of the original Garth Ennis series. Um, you know, Seth Rogen, of all people, Seth and Evan, they actually got together um, and made this happen. Uh, obviously, they also worked on Preacher, which personally I was not a big fan of, but, you know, we don't need to talk about that. Um, um, it came out, first season, by the way, came out in July of last year. Okay, so July of last year. And yeah. also, so, it, it should be noted that this show was created by Eric Kripke. Yep, of Supernatural fame. Uh, the original showrunner of Supernatural. Yeah. And creator. And also worked on, also co-created the show Timeless, which will come into play later. Yep. So, um, Brian, you know, once I, you know, once this show came out, of course, like, I was like, Brian, we got to cover this. This is pretty amazing. Um, I, I love the original series. Uh, like, this looks awesome. We watched it and I thought it was, I thought it was great. Um, and also, um, um, oh yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say yet again, uh, hey, it sounds like a broken record, but, uh, listen, we're going to be saying this a lot. Uh, it's pretty much a catchphrase of the podcast version of the show uh this was actually uh one of our biggest hits on the original like youtube version of the show uh so much so in fact that uh i want uh, laz i can't remember his last name but the uh, laz something i don't remember his last name off the top of my head uh but uh the actor who played mother's milk actually watched our podcast Laz Alonzo Laz Alonzo I was like I know it's Laz I know it starts with an A Laz Alonzo watched our podcast commented thanked us and shared it on his Twitter um, I was just like oh my god like I mean obviously like you know showrunners have done that before like cr like you know crew people who are part of the crew have done that before I have uh, but I have never on my YouTube, I've never I've, seen. I'm... Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say I don't want to flex too much, but uh, I have had one or two creators of smaller shows thank me. Mm -hmm. But uh... but I have never, yeah, I've never gotten an actor like a lead actor, mind you. Like I've gotten, I've gotten like back when, um, like not on my block, but back when the Get Down was a thing, I got a bunch of like. I guess, like, not extras, but, like, some of the, like, the uh, background characters and, like, a couple of dancers have commented on some of those videos. 
but like I've never gotten like a lead like front and center person be like, "Hey yo, great video. Thanks for the support. Thanks for supporting the show. Really enjoyed it." And I like it wasn't just somebody who like used the name. It was a verified YouTube account. I was like, "Oh shit, this is verified. This is the actual this is the actual person." Yep. Oh, uh, so that was kind of mind blowing. Uh, I, I was definitely a little starstruck. Um, but yeah. So regardless, even even if uh, you know, even if you know, this isn't on the normal platform, and you know, the uh, my TV time count isn't nearly as well. Actually, it's about the same size as mine was last year, which is kind of crazy. Um, but so maybe Laz will see it. Maybe he won't. But uh, even if he doesn't, like, I I still really appreciate that. Like, I appreciate the love. Uh, thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. And also speak. And also speaking of love, like uh, you guys who were uh, part of the original audience. Now that we're like back active on YouTube, and you guys see that I'm like posting again, uh, you guys are. You guys seem to be coming back. So uh, welcome back. Nice. Yeah, uh, we're we're glad to have you again. Just wanted to do that uh, quick bit of housekeeping before we uh, started actually doing the uh, episode proper because like I, I've noticed that I, I've, I've been getting comments from names that I recognize. So, thank nice. you. Also, I uh, just want to point out something that I thought was we it kind of a little bit ironic that we did not plan. Mm-hmm. This is our second Amazon show in a row. Oh yeah! Wow, yeah, because we did Utopia last week. Yeah, that's true. Which, by the way, that did a lot better than I expected because Utopia is a lot more niche, you know. Yeah. Um, the YouTube version did really well. Nice. But um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So, I mean, we're not gonna spend too much time talking about last uh, last season of The Boys to, because, to be honest, uh, there is actually I think, um. No, actually, that, no. I, I, I didn't make, I didn't make a copy video and put it on the YouTube channel. Uh, this was just when it was only on my uh, regular ass channel. Uh, yeah, but regardless, we spent a whole video talking about that first season, so I feel like we don't need to reiterate our feelings. But we both really enjoyed it. Um, essentially, the boys is a dark parody of the DC comics. Uh, more specific, it's. Boys themselves are all based on Marvel characters, um, but there's uh, the Punisher. Huey's just a dude. He's not really based on. A mother's milk is based off of Lu- based off of Batrock the Leaper. Um, and, and then, then you, of course, you've got uh, Kimiko, the female of the species, who is based off of X twenty three. Uh, am I missing anyone? Oh, um. No, 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 those, those, guys, those are all the boys who are, like, direct off of the Justice League. You've got yeah. Homelander, who is the Superman analog, Queen Maeve, who is the Wonder Woman analog, Black Noir, who is the Batman analog, The Deep, who is the Aquaman analog, A-Train, who is the Flash analog, uh, Starlight, who uh, there uh, technically is an analog of Dazzler, so she doesn't fit. Which is why she joins the boys later. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, uh, they did have, they did start with, uh, what was his name again? Translucent. Translucent, who I guess you could say is somewhat an analog of Martian Manhunter. Yeah, because he can disappear and stuff. Oh, yep. And, and is like stupid powerful and hard to kill. Yep, um, technically that counts. Uh, all, uh, you know, there, there's also a like really funny, ironic casting choice that came uh, like that happened this season, which we'll talk about later, <laughs> involving Marvel. Yeah, but I um, think that that was on purpose because I know that was entirely on purpose. But Kripke like, definitely uh, because, knows be, this. Because, yeah, and, and I I feel like he was on Supernatural at a point, or at least his brother was. I don't I, think I one of them were. Really? Huh. I don't think okay, so. Okay, never mind then. Never mind then. Uh, but uh, but we'll we'll talk about that later because it it, it, it uh, burst one of the funniest memes ever, and we'll talk about that in a second because actually meme culture actually plays a big part of this season. 
mm-hmm. uh, which I, you know, did not expect. Uh, but we'll talk about that. Um, so essentially, right, we find out that like superheroes are actually really fucked up individuals in this world. And the boys essentially are here to take them down a peg. Um, well, because um, oh. in this version, they uh, they do what you'd normally expect in the normal real world, and they corporize the superheroes, and of course, all that fame which, and you money. Know, is it, which actually isn't too different from uh, you know the superhero comic books, uh, which you know Ennis came out with this right as uh, Iron Man was happening. And uh, so, you know, he kind of called a lot of the shit that's happening with Disney and, you know, the commoditization of the comic book industry and superheroes in general, like the big ass wave. That's so kind of plateauing a little bit because, you know, Endgame is over and like, uh, you know, you got to they got to build up the next thing. But yeah, um, it's very interesting because like it's, it's not just a take on it's not just a deconstruction of the superhero genre. It's also kind of a critique of celebrity culture. Um, so it's very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when, uh, like, you know, obviously if you're a comic book fan, you know that Superman is, like, the paragon of good. He is the best of the best. And, you know, you find out. Very early on, Homelander is the biggest asshole in the face of on the face of the earth. Yeah, because what would happen? What would happen if if like yeah, he because wasn't and, the and, paragon? Yeah, I, yeah. I was gonna say, and it's pretty much said that the inspiration for Homelander was uh, very similar to Superman Red Sun, uh, but like. Imagine it. What if Homelander, or not? What if Homelander? What if Superman was raised by like, li- like Lex Corp scientist instead of uh, the Kents? Yeah. Um. And so he became a massive dickhead with a like a god complex. Uh, so much so to the point where um, both in the comics and in the TV show, um, oh, well, actually in the TV show it's not directly referenced. Uh, but in the comic, it is directly referenced. During 9-11, Homelander decides to just let the people die. Yeah. Because he, because he, can't, because he can't physically save them all. So he's just like, he, yeah, we're just going to let them die. They, they literally go through it, and it's like, he cannot lift the plane. And they like go through all the scenarios, and he's like, look, if he's we like, try I, to do this... I, It'll tear the plane in half, and they're going to die anyway. And And if I try try to do do it, I'm going to die. Yeah, and if we try to do this, I'm going to die. And then if we try to do this, it'll save some, but it'll also give us... Yeah, but but then they're going to live knowing that we let these people die. So we're just going to let all of them die. And maybe just like, well, we could at least save this little girl. Let's save this little girl. Come on. Like, she's just a little girl. And you have this mother frantically begging for her daughter's life. Um, and it's just like, no, fuck you. No, you he's dick. like, no, because uh, what if she speaks out? What if she says something? Yep. This mm-hmm. little girl could ruin all of our careers. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he dips. Maeve reluctantly leaves. And uh, Maeve ends up becoming one of my favorite characters mm-hmm. uh, from the seven, at least. Because uh, she has probably the most dynamic character growth. Because uh, she, you know, understandably so, becomes extremely jaded. Because she realizes, you know, shit doesn't change. We're not actually heroes. We're just public faces. Uh, Fuck this are we shit. getting into spoilers now? Oh, not yet. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of speaking in general. This is kind of okay. like just Maeve's character. Just want to make um, sure. Yeah, so she she gets she gets a little jaded and she's kind of like fuck this shit, um, I, I'm done. We're not really heroes. We're just public faces. Fuck all of that. And when Starlight first comes in in the first season, she's very bright eyed, bushy tailed, really excited because she grew up idolizing the Seven. And you know that's kind of Maeve's first kind of domino, right? Because she sees a lot of herself in Starlight. She's like, I was a lot like you once, 
but then I realized the world was shit. Um, and eventually Starlight does realize the world is shit. Um, and, you know, that that's how she ends up turning around and working with the boys eventually. Um, and basically for all of season two, she's kind of the inside person within the seven trying to help take down Vought, the evil corporation, corporation uh, behind uh, the seven. Um, and also this show, uh, both the first season and this season in particular, have proven to me that Giancarlo Esposito should be Lex Luthor. Mm-hmm. He I mean, gives me exactly what I want. I don't know if Lex he'd do Luthor. it now because of typecasting and because he plays so many villains now, but he would be perfect. He is absolutely perfect. That dinner table scene with Billy this season... That's some straight-up Lex Luthor shit. Also, uh... Oh, yeah, true. That's the scene I was thinking, Gus. Mm-hmm. And then also the scene with, uh... A certain, uh... New character. With him. Yeah, fuck that bitch. We'll, we'll, no, we'll get to her. Not her. Him. Like, he... With the new male character. Oh, got you. Got you. That, yeah, that guy. Fuck when that they guy had that though. dinner scene, um, that was also very Lex Luthor-esque. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so pretty much, you know, just to sum it up, you know, both of us really enjoyed the first season. Uh, we've talked about, like, about 15 or so minutes about it, so we're going to go ahead and jump into spoilers from here on out. Brian, do you have any closing thoughts on season one? It, kind of your, your first impressions on the show? I never really knew the comics going into it. And, uh, I mean, I knew the comics existed. And I knew the whole Simon Pegg connection. And, uh, that was really cool. And, but that's all. And I knew the basic premise. But that's all I really knew going into it. And I really liked season one. It was really cool. It was also really fun to see, uh, Carl Urban, and also surprise, found out that our lead character is the son of Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid, who you know, funny enough, like I mean, um, what, what do we call it? Like you know, we got we got a bunch of like, I mean, he's not technically so he's the son of Dennis Quaid, uh, and obviously, uh, I was gonna say like last week we had a show with John Cusack as like a like a really surprisingly standout character um Huey Huey's a lot more than you think and normally I don't like these just kind of cliche like really good good guys but he's needed in the show uh and we'll we'll definitely talk about and that and they even more explore as, that mm-hmm, as time goes on um so uh, since we're into spoilers now, uh, we're going to start by talking about the ending of season one. So, Butcher's whole motivation for taking down the Seven, in particular Homelander, stems from the fact that his wife, Becca, was raped by Homelander, and he believes she was kidnapped. Uh, because everybody else just presumes she's dead, because she went missing and has been off the grid for years. Um, but he's not given up because uh, the his CIA contact who helped train him um, because he was already a military guy prior to this, but like she helped train him in like you know taking down soups, um, and she formed the boys uh, with French uh, with Frenchie and of course MM, uh, which we see a little bit of in flashbacks um, in season two. But anyway. We discover at the end of season one that Becca, his wife, ended up getting pregnant by Homelander and she had his kid. And she made a deal to go off the grid and basically kind of like live in like a Truman Show type neighborhood, like with Vought employees, all like the neighbors and such, so that she could raise the kid properly. And make him a good boy so he because, wouldn't be a dickhead. Because not like only Homelander. did Billy not know that the kid existed, Homelander didn't know. And uh, mm-hmm. 
the reason why Vought was so eager to do it is because they're like, uh, if Homelander they realize goes that home... rogue on us, he's our contingency plan. Yep. Which uh, is kind of similar to like Batman's contingency plan for himself. Uh, because uh, if you guys have ever read the story or seen the movie Tower of Babel, I mean, they don't actually say it in the movie. They say it in the comic book. Uh, because, like, for so real quick, the Tower of Babel story is all about Ra's al Ghul getting the um, contingency plans that Batman has against all the Justice League, right? And at the end, when they vote Batman out of the Justice League, he's talking to Clark, and he's just like, all right, so you had a contingency plan for each of us. But what was your contingency plan for you? He goes, easy. I trained five of them. So, you know, obviously Batman's contingency plan for Batman is the Robins. Well, also, so, also uh, Clark. Well, yeah, it's Clark. But uh, also, Batman has counters for Clark. Um but yeah, because um, in the Tower of Babel movie, so, I believe he says that his my counter is the Justice League. Yeah, is my you. contingency plan is the Justice League. Mm-hmm. My counter is you. Yeah, because he 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 has faith in his best friend and all that. Now, unfortunately, the boys is not as hopeful a world as the DC universe. So. Yep. Also, um, there there this world Batman is uh a bit different. I'll just say that, and also, um, yeah, there. This version of Batman explains, like, gives him a reason for uh, all the death-defying things that Batman does and gets away. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you know, um, the uh, it's actually different than his reveal in the comics because, like, uh, he's not, oh, he's not human. Which is pretty interesting. And apparently um, he doesn't self-identify as any race. Yep. We find that out this season, which is interesting. Um, and then we also find out that he has a, a tree nut allergy, which, like, I love how a seemingly, like, meaningless, like, kind of sweet moment that Starlight has turns out to be a big plot point later that saves her life. Deus Ex Almond Joy. That was pretty great. But uh, real quick, back to the ending of season one. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, Billy discovers she has this kid. And obviously, you know, due to what happened with Homelander, Billy has this crippling hatred of soups. Which up? And so he's like, I. Which we find out uh, in season two might go a little bit deeper than just that, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So basically, like he he starts to hate he starts to hate superheroes because of what happened to home it's Homelander, um, and just um, and also it's there's like a, it's a deep it's a deeper thing about like just people that are stronger than him uh like kind of being assholes mm-hmm. uh mostly his dad mostly his dad and you know we get a direct conversation with that surprise um, guest star john but, noble yeah which is pretty crazy uh but i, I will say this and I'm, i want to start with billy normally i would uh like work my way up to billy because billy kind of has the most uh development in this season but I want to start with Billy because uh, Billy, uh, as a comic fan, I've always wanted someone to sit Frank down and be like, dude, you need to just chill the fuck out. Do, do, do you realize what you're doing here? Like, you're not actually a hero. You're a psychopath with a bunch of weapons. Like, um, calm the fuck down. If you really want to do this, join the military again. Um, but yeah, Becca, thankfully, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like if I feel like if Frank had his family, um, obviously he'd be okay. 
Um, and he, like he would be able to have this conversation with like Maria or something. But like Becca actually has this talk with Billy that I've always wanted someone to have with Frank. Or Becca's like, look, I'm scared of you. You are terrifying. Like, you, I love you. You're a good man. You're a great person. And, you know, I do love you and care about you. But goddammit, Billy, you were always just one day, one bad day away from snapping everyone's neck. And she even says... When I was when, that it's not just yep, the she homeland. Was like, when I was thing. raped by homeland, yeah, that's what she said. She was like, "When I was raped by homelander, I went to Vought and not you, because I was scared of what you were going to do. I was scared that you were going to seek revenge and not stop until you got it, no matter what it cost you, even if it killed you. And I did not want you to die, so I left." Mm hmm knowing that this is exactly what you were going to do. And look at you. This is what you did. Yup. And then that really woke Bill and, and, and that really woke Billy up to the point where he was actually in the end able to do the right thing. When what I thought was going to happen happened because literally during this final fight, I was like, oh my God, they're, they're not going to kill Becca. Are they? They're, they're definitely going to kill Becca. Becca's going to die. Becca's gonna die somehow. Um, and it's gonna traumatize the kid. I was like, what's gonna, uh, ha- what's gonna happen? Um, Although I will admit that and so, the way that she died, I did not see coming. Oh, yeah, how she, yeah, cause I, I, yeah, I didn't see it coming either, like, in, in the way they did it. Uh, because, um, you know, I, uh, past this point is, like, past where, like, past where the like what what the comics actually explored because really like all it like all the the boys main series was about was taking down Vought. and um you know uh a, a lot of the deeper stuff with like Ryan and that was never really explored at least i don't remember um but yeah so oh the shit with Ryan man um which you know we can talk alongside with Billy and Becca I, I really like this kid. Mm-hmm. I think the actor the kid actor is really well well done. And um I also really love the fact that he has anxiety. Um especially because he has superpowers. Um because like I mean, you know, I talk a lot of shit about the Man of Steel movie um for obvious reasons, but one of the one of the best scenes from that movie is very early on where Kid Clark is like sitting there in a corner freaking out because he can hear everybody's heartbeat, mm-hmm. all these noises. It's just like it's going crazy, and he he saw his teacher's skeleton and shit. He's just like, "Mom, ma, I don't know what to do. What, what am I gonna do? It's so scary." Like, I be this is a little boy. He's freaking uh-huh. the fuck out. He's like, "I don't know what's happening." Also, um, um, ironically enough, you know who Ryan kind of reminded me of. Um, honestly, he looks like he looks like Jake Lloyd from the Phantom he, Menace. He does, but um, I meant like the character of him and like what they do with him. Uh, because it's oh, ironically yeah, enough because uh, it's from a show that Kripke worked on, but he didn't create the character, and that's Jack. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he does. And the fact that he's the I son of this that. really powerful evil guy. Literal yes. Satan. <laughs> Jack is the son of literal Satan and uh Humlander isn't too far off. Yep. Uh but yeah, no, that that that, that is that's pretty true. I, I can definitely see that. But yeah, no, um I, I and I, I really love uh Ryan as a character. He he really is a good kid. Um, and, uh, you know, when he lashes out and yells at his mom, like, I hate you, you lied to me, how could you do this? Because, understandable, his entire life was a lie, of course he'd be pissed. Um, but then, like, afterwards, he's just like, I miss my mom, can I call my mom? And so, like, but when Becca and Billy and them, you know, come and save him, 
he's just like, oh, mom, thank God. I'm so sorry I didn't mean anything I said. And then, you know, when what happens, happens. Like, this is what, and it, this is what really broke my heart. Mm-hmm. I, um, so, Stormfront is choking out the life from Becca. And... Because very early on, she's proven that she's very, like, sadistic. Yeah. Um, um, like, from what she did to Kimiko. And Kim. Yeah, uh, Kimiko's brother. And, just, uh, and they also again call back to a scene where, uh, where it's uh, they they're trying to get Jack. Uh, I just said Jack. They're trying to get Ryan to use his powers and use his uh. Yep. 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 And yeah, because yeah, it uses heat vision on the deep action figure, and he go and you know, uh, a Homelander says. You know, sometimes it's easier for me when I picture somebody I hate or something I hate. He goes, you know, I don't really hate anybody, which, you know, he's a sweet little cinnamon roll. Of course, he doesn't hate anyone. Um, but then, he, you know, he sees his mom, like the life getting choked out of her. And he, he's yelling at her. He's like, please, please stop it. Stop it. I'll go with you. Please just let her go. Let her go. And like, of course, Billy's over there yelling. Well, not only is Billy like, yelling, you know, trying Bill- He's 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 trying to Jason he's trying to Jason Todd yeah, at the same time. The, um, trying to beat her with, with a with, crowbar. Yeah, I was gonna say, which fun which fun fact I, I just want to put this out there because I'm kind of tired of this narrative uh, because I, I I even checked out the three Joker story and they're still running with this narrative which is false that like the comic fandom has kind of just spiraled into an urban legend that like isn't actually true. Jason Todd was not killed with a crowbar. No, people. Jason Todd was beaten to. Jason Todd was beaten to unconsciousness. Woke up, untied himself and his mother, and was killed mm-hmm. by a bomb. If Jason Todd was killed by a crowbar, I think he would have been able to actually have been saved by. Yeah. Like everybody says that Joker beat him to death, but he did not. Joker, Joker used a him. bomb to kill him. And beat him half to death. Yeah. But the explosion is what killed him, which uh, I hadn't seen Death in the Family yet, so I don't know how they handle it. The animated show? The animated movie? Oh, it's a, mo- it's, it's, it's a movie now? Oh, yeah. They, they just released now? it. It's an animated movie that they just released. Um Really? Because I, you know, I, I mean, we, it, it was shown in Under the Red Hood, but I didn't know that, like, Death in the Family was actually, uh, you know? Yeah, oh, cool. uh, but Under the Red Hood definitely showed it the right way. Well, they yep. didn't show, like, him untying but, himself, yep. but. And his mom. They didn't show that, but, but they showed but, yeah. him still alive. And then the explosion goes off. Yep. The explosion happened. But yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up because, like, it's been bothering me, and especially because I read the Three Jokers thing recently, and they're still saying that. And I'm just like, you guys know that didn't actually happen that way, right? Like, um, uh, just anyways, looked it, uh, I'm just, sorry for the. Um, just I, looked I, it I'm, up, sorry. Uh, real quick. It mm-hmm. came out the 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I definitely have to review that. Yeah, right? it's uh, it's on digital. Yeah, it came out on Blu-ray and DVD okay. on the thirteenth. Oh, cool! And uh, cool, cool, cool. It's called Death. It's of the called family? Batman: Death, in, Death the in the Family. And okay, uh, cool, it's cool. got it definitely brings back Bruce out, Greenwood man. as Batman. Greenwood, um, yeah. It, it brings nice. back uh, John DiMaggio as Joker. As the Joker, nice. So it's the under the red hood. Uh, yeah, but uh, they don't bring in uh, Jensen. I mean, Jensen's a, a Jensen. I mean, Jensen's adult yeah. Jason though. Like this would they, have to be. Yeah. I think they do bring back kid Jason though. Uh, Vincent Martella. Nice, nice, nice. But yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up real quick. So anyway, so Ryan's freaking out, and eventually he, like, straight up, like, Superman, uh, Injustice Superman, like, fries that Nazi bitch. 
And yes, I said Nazi. We'll get to that in a second. And uh, he doesn't like out and out kill her. At least she doesn't die immediately. But uh... yeah, but of course he's still learning to control his powers. He has no idea what the fuck he's doing, and on accident, like you know, the beam moves and slices. Well, I don't even up. think it was that, dude. I. Because um, if you see the scene, if you see the scene when it happens, mm-hmm. it it immediately faced white. So, what I think happened was since this was his first time using it, he didn't know like how to control it, and he went like full on Cyclops without the glasses. Uh, and that's why. Yeah. That's why. Uh, mm-hmm. That's so, why like, Stormfront Nazi bitch is so burnt because he went like full force on her and the mom just happened to be in the way. Right. Yeah, like right in front of her technically. So it's kind of like a it's kind of like a special beam cannon type of thing if you've seen Dragon Ball. Kind of. Um, when they they got but, Raditz cuz like Goku was technically like right behind Raditz. So he still got he got he also got hit. Um, but yeah, so uh, mom. I know I'm, I'm making a lot of so references good. today. But this is the part that broke my heart was uh, like you know when Billy obviously rushes to his wife, the, the last thing she tells him is, "It's not his fault, Billy. Tell him it's not his fault. He's a good boy. He's a good boy." And then believe me, and he's then a good me- boy. Promise me. She says, "Promise me." You make sure he knows he's a good boy. Yeah. Uh, he he can't be like him. You hear me? He can't be like him. And, he won't uh, be. Trust me. I know. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, while this is going on, the little kid's just freaking the fuck out appropriately. He yeah he yeah, yeah yeah obviously he's bawling his eyes out and just screaming like I didn't mean to I'm sorry mom no mom please and then you know like th- this is what really got me like obviously all of that was huge but the part that really gets me is just Billy the shock on Billy's face he just starts screaming help us somebody help us and uh someone does hear. Eventually, but it's not who you yep. want. It's it's not any of the boys. Homelander shows up, sees his Nazi girlfriend on the ground, like incoherently babbling in German with a half burnt face, and he's like, "Ryan, did you do this?" And it's and, and she, you know he's like obviously freaking. He's like, "I I I didn't mean to." Me? Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. He goes, you know, and he's just like, it's okay. And then Homeland is like, it's okay, son. You just come with me. We'll Meanwhile, talk about by it the later. way, uh, and then you know, covered in blood mm. when he's saying this. Which, which that was mm-hmm. another part that really yep. got to me was uh, when he said, uh, when he said, come here, and. Ryan just slowly scooted behind Billy. Yeah, that that's what I, that's what I really love. He's like, "Come here, son," and then and like he walk he walks to Billy, and it's just like, "No, he's my dad. He's Becca's husband, so that makes him my dad." But, and I do like that moment because I think also that moment helped with Billy too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, because there's. Yeah, because there's a slight moment where like Billy looks at the kid and he goes, "You know what?" He he actually no, grabs a, right. a crowbar. I promise. While looking at the kid, and I'm like, "Billy, no, Billy, don't." Yep, yep. He hesitates. I don't know. He grabs it and he's, he's looking at the kid, and then that's when Homelander shows up, and I'm just like, "Oh, I've never been so happy." But, to then, be but then the kid comes to Billy, and you can tell Billy's like, "Oh, fuck." This kid actually does. Yeah, no, he not uh, he. Yeah, he, uh, he actually thinks I'm his dad, like, cause you know Becca's obviously his mom, and it's she said she said that's the first thing she said when she saw him, cause obviously he was scared of the big uh, yep. British man with a gun. Um, 
And she's like, no, 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 no. He's my husband. And, uh, yeah, because uh, that also caused Billy to have a little bit of a change of heart. At one point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, Homelander is obviously, he's like, you know, are you really going to save this little shit? He murdered your wife. And he goes, yeah, I promise. Um, and so shit goes down and then it leads to uh, also like let's rewind a little bit um, because I want to talk about one of the most cathartic scenes in superhero media I have ever seen at least within the last couple of years okay so Stormfront let's go let's switch over let's switch gears let's talk yeah. about Stormfront yeah so Okay, so Stormfront uh, is this chick with, like, electricity powers. But she seems she's, okay at first. She seems kind of um, like, she's like, honestly, I don't know if you got the vibes, but I did at first, minus the electricity. She kind of reminded me a little bit of Power Girl. Yeah, she's got, like, an edgy... Yeah, with, like, with, like, the an fact edge that, to uh, And, um... She has all these like similar powers to Homelander, and then she's like, "Fuck the system." Yeah, she has like a give no fucks attitude, which kind of makes you like, "Oh, she's kind of cool. Maybe she, maybe she can understand the boys and stuff." And then we, we find out later that she's an actual factual we, Nazi. Not only actual um, factual Nazi, but friends. With the Nazi, and and yeah, and and he is the and, and she's the wife of Frederick Vaught, aka the founder Industries. of Vaught. Well, yep. Oh so, yeah, that's pretty fucking nuts. Uh, and so obviously, you know, she is uber racist because nazi Mm -hmm. um so she tries to get rid of she tries to get rid of a train she brutally murders kimiko's brother and calls him a yellow bastard that's the first Um, time that we got a key of uh yeah because being racist because there Mm -hmm. was a big fight where uh she didn't really care about collateral damage especially we find out now yeah yeah and 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 at first yeah at first yeah, at first we think, oh, she doesn't care about collateral damage, and she's trying to chase after the bad guy. She doesn't give a fuck. She thinks it's like necessary, like necessary, uh, you know, evil or whatever. But this apartment complex is mostly black people, and then it's just like, well, mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and so, yeah, they. Yeah, they have this so, big drag out uh, fight later on, between Kimiko, her brother, and yep. Stormfront. Yep. And, uh, like, so uh, Kimiko ends up being saved by her brother, and then her brother ends up being killed. So then Kimiko kind of goes on this whole very much X 23 esque journey of, like, being an assassin for a bit, Frenchie snapping her out of it and being like, look, I. I know you're better than this. I know you're a good person. You don't need to be a monster. You know, he's kind of her Logan in that sense. Um, and he, you know, we find out that Frenchie has some, like, you know, some skeletons in his closet, too, that kind of make him feel like Which, a monster. Um, um, also, by the way, thanks to those flashbacks, we find out that uh, Frenchie has a name. Oh yeah, I forgot, uh, I forgot about that. I'm trying to look at it. I'm trying to get to uh, it right now, but we actually find out Frenchie's name because all for season one they just call him Frenchie, and uh, now yep. we found out that it's Sergey. Yep. So right, and so Frenchie, like we actually discover that like. Uh, he, uh, you know, when he got to work with, uh, he got to work with the boys that kind of, like, it's almost a Suicide Squad-esque deal. Like, he doesn't have to go to jail if he works for them. 
Uh, and uh, he was uh, the whole, and obviously we heard what happened with Lamplighter and the whole Lamplighter case and the murder of like, uh, you know, the colonel. But family one little, um, by one little thing that uh, was always like in the back of your head was the fact that uh, Frenchie was assigned detail to watch Lamplighter. To sh- yeah, to, yeah, to shadow lamplighter. So where the fuck was Frenchie? Um, and then we find out that one of his best friends, who was one of his roommates, along with a homegirl that we saw repeatedly throughout the first season, um, actually was ODing, and Frenchie went to go save him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but unfortunately, after that, he left and you know didn't want to go, didn't want to see him ever again. And very shortly after, he OD'd and died. Yeah, and um, Frenchie was only gone for thirty minutes. They reveal that. Yep. But that was just enough time for uh, the incident to happen, and you know that sucks for Lamplighter. Um, also, uh, so anyway, back to Stormfront. Um, so it leads Kimiko down this whole journey, and it actually leads like Frenchie and Kimiko to get a lot closer, uh, which I really enjoy. I like their friendship. Which, and uh, Kim by a the lot. way, I I do definitely more like it in season two, where he's like, "Wow, I was doing all this stuff to like uh, put you on this pedestal and try to save you, and uh, I'm sorry, and I'm not gonna do that anymore." And yeah, I'm gonna just treat you like a person, and like we're equal. I know you can take care of yourself, but I also know you're a good person, and you don't deserve also to like be a monster. How, uh, he kind of stood up to her this season. Yeah, like he's like, "You want me to talk with you, and, and yet you don't teach me your language." You need, yeah, you need to, yeah, you need to teach me your language if you want me to talk to you. Don't fucking do this. Mm-hmm. And you know him learning her language really came into play later with this uh, with Stormfront, and we'll talk about that soon because I really do want to talk about that beatdown. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we so we discover this, and then eventually, like A Train is kicked out of the seven, um, and A Train essentially, um, you know, again we go back to the deep real quick, and we'll talk about the deep a little bit more. Mm-hmm. For the deep, he ends up becoming a Scientologist, and uh, honestly, and honestly, features oh. One of my favorite surprise guest stars of season two, Patton Oswald. Yeah, the L. Ron Hubbard. Yep. And like the L. Ron Hubbard of this world. Uh, I forget who the actor is, but he is really familiar. Uh, he I've was seen him in Timeless. Of he was the big bad for season one. Yeah, he was the Timeless guy. And. Yep. But yeah, he's the L. Ron Hubbard of uh, and, of this uh, universe, he I guess. Who I was talking um, about, though? Oh yeah, I know Patton Oswalt was the wasn't he, he wasn't the no. Hawkeye guy, was he? Patton not Patton was Oswald, Oswald was the voice of the Deep Gills. Oh, in the that Gills! Drug yeah, scene. he was the voice of the Gills. Yeah, right, right. Which oh man, like. That was so fucked up last season when that girl was, like, fingering his gills. Like, bro, you know he needs those to breathe, right? Yep. Like, that's gross. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, so the Deep becomes a Scientologist, and A-Train almost becomes a Scientologist. But? I mean, technically, he still he still is one. Uh, but, like, he got into the seven and said, nah, fuck this, I'm out. Peace, bitches. But, and then the deep, yeah, the deep, he did all of this to, like... He married some rando. Yeah, he which, married uh, a which, rando. He signed over control of... Where, uh, mm-hmm. They are trying to find the future wife. He's like, oh, it's obviously this chick. She's super hot and a freak in the sack, it seems. So, uh, she's obviously the one. They're like, no, no. And he's like, but you said I get to choose. And you are. You're going to choose this girl. Cause, yeah, you're going to choose Cassandra, the teacher. You got to have a more positive image. She, she looks like a regular, the normal, one that was nice a hopeless girl. Romantic. And, like, it'll help your approval. It'll help your approval rating with women and stuff like that. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so... 
yeah, there's that. Um, and so, anyway, A Train eventually is like, I right, uh, because uh, Vought was actually a, a Scientologist himself. I'm gonna say the Scientologist because I don't want to be like the Church of the Collective because that's way mm-hmm. longer. Um, since since Frederick Vought was one of the original Scientologists, he uh, there's actually files on him and Stormfront in the actual like base of the church. So A Train steals those files. Uh, who which the the leader of the church lets him. A train steal those files and uh, gives them to Starlight and it's like yeah fuck me. Yeah, because apparently uh, her her family has ties to the Church of the Collective. Yeah, the, well, well, it's, it's not it's not her family. It's uh like like I said, her uh Vought was one of the oh yeah, members. that's right, my bad. But um, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so yeah. Uh, Vought, the husband was original member, and mm-hmm. so they have files on her. And so he's like, this racist, this racist Nazi bitch is keeping me out of the seven. Fuck her. I want back in. So if you can do that, here. No, nah, fuck her. Uh, so, Storm, uh, so Stormfront gets all her shit leaked, and obviously no one likes Nazis, as they should. You know, no one's telling her to stand back or stand and by. I, and I love um, the memes, how it's going through all the memes, and then it just cuts in one video of the... Nazi storm, Nazi stormfront, Hitler star, run her over with yep. your and then car. also we... And, and, he, and Huey just like, he was like, you know... But also it Jack- cuts to a video of this dude who's like, I can't believe I actually have to say this, but Nazis are bad. But Nazis are bad, y'all. <laughs> oh man, that, that, and it was, that was also so like good. poetic justice so good. because her whole thing of like coming in at the beginning, taking down yeah. Homelander, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was all about memes and social media culture? You know, fear mongering, using social media, Twitter in particular. You know, sounding like a particular. Uh, well, I mean, they weren't even the, trying uh, to hide that. With one of her slogans, "Make America Super." Yep. No, it was it was "Make yeah. America Safe Again." Make yes. America Safe Again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Agent Orange. Shout out to you, buddy. Not gonna say anything. <laughs> um. But yeah. Um. There you go. Uh. So anyway, it leads to one of the most cathartic scenes in superhero media I've uh, seen in years. Uh, so, Kimiko and Starlight end up having to fight Stormfront to obviously, like, keep her away from Ryan and Becca and Billy as they're escaping. And so, they're, they're, they're beating her ass, and, at first, and, you know, eventually Stormfront starts to get the upper hand, and it's just like, oh, shit, oh, shit, they might die. Like, she die. legit is choking, choking the nowhere. shit out of Annie. Kimiko, She's already yeah, Annie, Kimiko's then, yeah, neck. Kimiko's trying to... And, but obviously, Kimiko is X-23, yeah, but so her healing factor eventually kicks but, in, but yeah, it takes so some while, time. While she's incapacitated, yeah. she's choking the shit out of Annie. Yeah, and, she sa- and she says her catchphrase, you know, I like to see the lights go out. Yeah. Um, and, then, and, and then, you know, it's like, oh, uh, shit, what's gonna happen? And then Maeve swoops in and it's like, fuck yep. you. And they proceed to jump her. It's so mm. beautiful. Uh, and, to the, uh, and to this like like rock girl power song that's in all like the deodorant mm-hmm. commercials. And, uh, and I love it though because Frenchie is like, wow. I guess the future is me now. Yep. <laughs> right, it was uh, it was it was, it, and then he was like, "Wow, yeah, <laughs> girls yeah. get it done," which you know is, is, yeah, goes back to like that weird marketing campaign that they did. And now, really quick, I want to talk about Maeve. Um, I really like what they did with Maeve's character because it taught it, it really kind of addresses a problem that I've had with the comic community for a bit. You know, uh, is like forced mm-hmm. diversity, and and also um, the the bullshit and, that uh. 
goes to show you just how evil uh, Homelander is. That uh, yep. he will do something that even some of the people won't do, and that uh, he outed someone. Yeah, he. Yeah, he outed Maeve, um, but he outed her as a lesbian when she's clearly bi because she was in a relationship with Homelander. Yep. So even then, because like her girlfriend even like you know talked to the uh, like talked to Ashley, the person in charge of like marketing for the staff, and she goes, "You know Maeve's bi, right? She's not actually gay." She goes, "Yeah, but lesbian sells more," which. It's kind of it's kind of a fucked up truth because like I mean this is a deeper issue but like bi people don't ever get as much credit nope. within the LGBTQ community because like a lot a lot of the like people on either side of the like you know same gendered spectrum like either lesbian or uh, straight are like you know you, you just need to pick a side or whatever when you know you're being bi literally means you like yeah them. and then. Um, that whole but, initiative yeah, um, that's been going on recently where it's like, I can be bi and have a husband. Yep. But yeah, like, you know, th- then they start all these bullshit, like, fake ass, like, like Pride, gay Maeve. pride campaigns with Maeve, Brave. Maeve. Yeah. A Brave yeah, Maeve Brave Rainbow Maeve Burger. Sounds like a whole big, not only Twitter catchphrase, but like a line of just like frozen dinners. Like we even see, we even see Becca at yep. one point cook a brave Maeve Lomu. Yeah, brave Maeve lasagna. <laughs> yep, brave <laughs> Maeve lasagna. That was just and like what? Like, yeah, and uh, you two have become the second biggest lesbian couple in Hollywood right now. Yeah, behind Ellen and Portia. And, and then oh. they also do like address another like equally fucked up thing and it's that that the american public the american public are more easy with a lesbian couple if one is more masculine and one is more feminine yep. it's, and it's like well you know i i, I don't wear because like the girlfriend they're making the girlfriend like wear a tux or something for this pride parade it's just like you know i don't dress like this right like i wear i i just i dress like a normal ass woman or not that not that dressing like handsomely isn't normal. They want her you know to wear I mean? a pantsuit. Like, I, I, dr- I, I wear to. dresses and stuff. But they're like, it's more masculine. Yeah, basically. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so there's that, and so it leads to a lot of great character development for Maeve, and uh, I'm very looking forward to seeing it because uh, in the end, she stands up to Homelander and is like, "Look, you're gonna let you're gonna let us back in." Or we're gonna mention, or I'm going to tell everyone. And uh, she's like, he's of course Homelander. Well, then I'll kill you and everyone that you love. And she's like, yeah, you will, but you'll also still be out into the public and you'll lose the public. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, yeah, she she was like, yeah, you'll kill everyone I love, but then no one will love you. And also, uh, we then, as like a cool little like director thing, we start hearing Homelander, Homelander, like the people cheering for Homelander in his head. Yep. Yep. And 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 then um, you know we get to see like he has a whole press release where he forgives Star or he apologizes to Starlight. Um, and like he lets them, and he lets both her and, and train like, back Maeve. into the seven. Um, and it's like Maeve and, and yep. Starlight, Starlight are, are uh, my two best friends. Yeah, and and also like you know Maeve and Starlight, like they both know he's evil and fucked up, but they're like, look, if we let, if we just let the assholes drive the ship, then yep. we're just as complicit. Uh, so because we gotta uh, stick, that was we also a good around. moment with uh, Maeve and her girlfriend. When the girlfriend saw the mm-hmm. actual video, and uh, her whole thing was not the fact that she didn't blame Maeve at all. 
she never blamed Maeve, but she still had to leave because she just couldn't deal with it. And she's like, I'm not as strong as you yep. are. Mm-hmm. Both literally and figuratively. So yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Um, I, I thought it ended on a really nice note. And then a big twist at the end. Uh, which real quick, I want to address. Yeah, we uh, we didn't talk about it, but I want to quickly talk about it. Uh, Iceman from the uh, old Fox X Men movies mm-hmm. is Lamplighter, uh, and it, it led to one of the funniest memes ever. Uh, with um, like, man, twenty twenty, like in in twenty twenty, Iceman now has fire powers. How can y'all deny <laughs> climate change is real? Uh, how? how how can y'all deny I never climate saw that. change isn't real? Nice. Funniest oh, yeah, meme indeed, I've ever seen. Indeed. Definitely. <laughs> uh but but yeah, that was so funny because uh Also like uh, uh Ice like Lifeline's whole character also kind of spotlights one of the weird niches that I actually find completely hilarious about, like, the superhero community. And that's uh, surprisingly well-made superhero oh, porn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and they actually, like, um, make a emotional, inspiring speech out of it. Yeah, like, like you know, do you want to be the cuck or do you want to be the guy who go fuck the wife? Let's go fuck the wife. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, he was, was like, that, "Let's go." That was pretty fuck great. The uh, wife. Consensually. Consensually, of course. <laughs> yes. Yep. And just listen yeah, off the great. different uh, porn parodies and yeah, so all the surprise... that. Yep. But yeah, so like, let's talk about the ending and just the the surprise. So one of the biggest things that happens that kind of like, you know, switches things into like a bot's favor is just this random, this seemingly random massacre during the hearing that would have actually put Vought out of business. Mm-hmm. Um, and so naturally, naturally, we think Vought uh, killed well, also, to cover um, their own ass. There um, is a scene which uh, I don't know if you remember this or not. And this might come into play mm-hmm. is the fact that, uh, that Homelander and uh, and uh, Stormfront have a have a scene where they discuss it, and uh, they're uh, like, "Could this be Eddie?" I think that's the name that they said. And it's like, I don't know, but he's very smart for oh, yeah. his kind. That's what Stormfront said. Mm. So, mm. I feel like that's going to come into play. Because I do have a theory. Yep. Uh, but, so, so we find out that Victoria Newman, this politician who's been, like, very anti-Homelander this entire time, she's the one who has the powers to uh, make people spontaneously Their heads explode, I guess. explode. Um, and uh, we see this. Yep, After she just... explodes the head of the, uh... yeah, the Scientologist head. people, um, like which the is Elrond really Hubbard funny because guy. it yep. honestly takes on this a uh, second note of like expectation and irony when uh, you think about the show Timeless because uh, both actors were mm-hmm. in Timeless, uh, but. But she oh, yeah, was, that's right. she was, she was the, the good nerdy girl. Yeah, she yeah, she yeah, yeah, she was the girl on the team she who was, has the sister, She was the right? one yeah, yeah. who like uh, was the love interest for Rufus and was the really cool nerdy girl. Yep. Uh she was the like tech girl mm-hmm. and uh he was the big bad for season 1 and so your expectation is oh, she's a good guy and he's a villain and he's going to be like Season three's vi- big villain, and then that scene happens, and mm. nope, it's switched. She's the villain. Nope. Yep, and now Huey's working directly for her because the boys have split up because they seemingly have taken down Homelander, um, and at least Stormfront. 
So MM is back with his family. Frenchie and Kimiko are having a good time. Uh, you know, um, you know, what you call it? Uh, Billy puts Ryan in protective custody and tells him, you know, don't be a cunt. Which that was, you know, that best was really dad funny to best, see. Yep, best dad twenty twenty. Yep. Is that you? Now remember what I told so, you. So. Don't be a cunt. Good boy. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, and of course, you know, the colonel is like, so do you think he's going to end up being like his father? And it's like, Becca didn't think so. And she's like, well, let's pray she's right. And he, there's a really sweet moment he has with Ryan where he gives her, uh, him this necklace that Becca gave Billy as a good luck charm. Uh, so he's like, now your mom's going to protect you. Um, Yes. Keep you safe. I thought that was really sweet. Um, but yeah, so um, Stormfront, not Stormfront, uh, Starlight and uh, Huey are back mm-hmm. together again, which is mm-hmm. adorable. Because that was a Love good them. scene where he's like, um, I realize that I have to like stop trying to help him. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, I, I have to, I have to like, you know, learn to stand on my own. Maybe, maybe like take some time, get away from all this. And she goes, Oh, uh, right. Then you know, I guess we'll just be friends. He goes, "Oh no, 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 no! I'm still clinging to you. Are you? Yeah. I'm not fucking crazy." Uh, which that was great, and we also find out the origin. Yeah, of which which, I, really which I also feel oh. like uh, that is setting up another mystery that they could address in season. Yep, and Huey's also mom. maybe yep, very much so. Maybe they could finally address. One of the biggest mysteries from season one, and that's the whole—that's the whole thing of which is of Huey having those moments where uh, he's just in total shock, and it looks like something is about to happen, but it doesn't. And we had another one of those where he was inside of the whale. Yep. Like. Yeah. Oh my god. I feel so bad for the deep. So many of yep. his friends just get murdered. First the dolphin yep. and now but the whale. It's just a... It's just a... Yeah, that happens, but... uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah, like the sound cuts out, like all you hear is ringing, and you think like some, something's about to go down, but nothing happens right now. Um, that, uh, what if... Like his mom is a super. Yeah, and um, uh, I was saying, uh, as when right when my AirPod died, I was saying I can't say anything, uh, because I've read the comics. I'm not gonna confirm or deny any of this. All right, because I I feel like the whole thing of Ryan is uh like going to like start more more like soup kids and uh that's who our villain is and that she is the daughter of whoever they thought it was going to be yep like that eddie or whatever they said but yeah and I, that I, it's his daughter yeah i got you so uh we pretty much were at the end uh is there anything else you want to talk about well, I do want to talk about one thing that I think, uh, since we're speculating, okay, um, I think a minor character, uh, I think there is a minor character that appeared this season that I think might be uh, become uh, bigger and uh, bigger in season three, and that is uh, Eagle the Archer. Yeah, the Hawkeye character. Who they thought might have been mm-hmm. the person to do it? Well, uh, because uh, because uh, basically he got kicked out of the, the church. church of Scientology, yep, or the Church of the Collective, because uh, he started like talking about how bad the church is and how they didn't help him like they said they would, and and, and, and they made the, him cut off contact with his mom and stuff. And the collective guy was like. Yeah, we hate him now. Yep, and then they denounce him, and 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 then they they released a bunch of like fake, like fabricated articles about like him being like, 
a rapist or something like some some horrible thing along those lines. It was um hunting another person that was dressed as a as deer. As a deer, right? And I feel like him and uh, the deep are gonna reconnect because the deep left the church at the end. Yep, and and, and like it seemed like they're really good friends. And I feel like they're going to maybe, like, get together, and uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe they could, like, put together a, like, vigilante team who works off the grid but does good still. And to, and to be and, honest, uh, it's, it, it, it's actually a funny te- it's a funny matchup because, you know, both Hawkeye and Aquaman are both really cool, like, really, like, awesome characters that... The general public likes to make fun of because it's just like, oh, he's just a fish guy. Oh, he's just a guy with arrows. What the fuck is he going to do yeah. on this team full of, like, heavy hitters? Which I don't know if you saw the, uh, if you ever saw it, but there's a video of someone where it's like, uh, where it's like Hawkeye during all the Avengers movies and it's like, all right, well, I did my part, so I'm going to leave. And it's just like, Number two, just chilling with his family, and then, and then, uh, end game. What the fuck did y'all do? This. Yep. Yep. And it, uh, like, it uh, talks about like how normal and good Hawkeye is during there, the movie. I, I forget. I forget who, but uh, even like even Jeremy Renner has embraced the meme. Um, and on I think it was mm-hmm. either Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel, one of the one of the late shows. He did a Ed Sheeran. Thinking out loud parody, it's called "I'm freaking Hawkeye." Um, and uh, he was talking about how like how valuable Hawkeye is as a hero, and what he actually does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like uh, it's uh, it's great. and how they actually like things start to mess up once he's no longer in the Avengers. <laughs> yep. I, I think it's. I think it's. I think it'll be pretty awesome. I, I would love to see that because I, I. I feel so bad for the deep. Poor Kevin. He don't. He doesn't deserve. Yeah. Any which, of that. by the way, by the way, really good surprise performance from Chase Crawford. Yeah. Seriously, like the deep is. He's not one of my favorite characters, but I always enjoy whenever he's on screen. Yeah, and it's just like the the length that they go with his character. Mm-hmm. And it's just like I can't believe this actor was like mostly known for being a pretty boy, CW pretty boy. He right? has a lot, and he has a lot of range because you know he went through a, like a big arc, you know, uh, like being exposed as kind of this like asshole, like misogynist uh, who mm-hmm. who tried to get a sexual favor out of a fan who is now a co who is now a coworker. Like, come on, man. Um. But yeah, no. It, that's yep, and then all these interactions with his friends. Yep. And like when when they go to the birthday party and A Train gives them a goldfish in a a goldfish in a bowl. And he's yep. like, "Hey, he knows me." <laughs> yep. And, and and then and then also so like A Train just asshole pranks on him like they give him like a blow up the doll dolphin with like lipstick on it like so fucked up um but yeah. yeah so is there anything else you want to speculate on before we head into plugs and stuff well I mean um uh, I also kind of want to see like who are going to be these new characters that are on Billy's new team yep. It'll be interesting uh, to see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that are going to work for Newman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am very curious. And uh, honestly, I would, even though I love the actor and I really like the character, I would be totally 100% okay if this was the end for Mother's Milk. M.M. does deserve to retire, bro. Like, he's been through too much. And, and he, in the and end, he, took, he leaves with his family. He, he took down a literal Nazi. I feel like he's good now. Yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, maybe Frenchie and the female, they have more chemical. 
oh, they yeah. have more to do, but I feel like MM is done. Like, yeah, I would be I, completely I feel, I feel okay like, if I feel like he's avenged his father now that, like, you know, Homelander's been taken, like, Stormfront has been taken down, and Vought has mm-hmm. been exposed for that, you know. Yeah. Also, uh, just real quick, want to bring up the whole uh, two bits of casting that we know for uh, season for season three. And uh, one is Jensen Ackles. Yep, that's exciting. As Soldier Boy, who is the you know uh, Bucky Barnes equivalent? Like, oh, technically it's like Captain America, Bucky Barnes, but more Bucky Barnes. But. Yeah, so that that will be interesting. Also, apparently they're trying to get Jeffrey Dean Morgan for next season. Ah, oh, shit! I know exactly who he should play. Um, but uh, due to uh, Walking Dead and uh, the pandemic, it's getting a little bit harder. But Kripke still hopes to bring him in. Oh, I, I, I would up. love. I, I would love to see Jensen and Jeff together again. I mean, we did see a little bit of it in season. Like in the recent season of Supernatural, with like the uh, mm-hmm. uh like what it was like the anniversary episode or the one of the big milestone number episodes 300. Yeah, 300. Yeah, I knew it was one of the big milestone number episodes that uh, you know, Papa it was the 300th and yeah. it was a wish episode and uh, yep, it was really good. I've, yeah. I've seen it now. Um, yeah, no, that, that uh, was, but that was an amazing episode to see, you know, also, Mary, Mary and Pops together mm-hmm. again. Mm hmm. Also, uh, which uh, Bravo played by the original actors. Yep. Um, but uh, lastly, a little thing. Um, well, also we've got the spinoff coming up. Yeah, which is like a college setting type deal, which is going to be interesting. Like... Yeah, it, it's going to be like a. It's going to be like kind of like the kind of similar to um, All American, where it talks about like the competitiveness in college but instead of football it's going to be supers yep and that's going to be really cool um and interesting to see how they do it uh and the last thing is a uh, real quick uh, fun fact that i didn't know uh, speaking about supernatural people of course this season again we had uh jim beaver come in for a brief moment yep bobby which uh by the way uh I didn't realize what the name of his character is. What was the name of his character? The name... Robert Singer. Oh, shit. Bobby. Just They call him Bob in this version. Nice. So, they call him... He's still Bobby. So, he's still Bobby Singer. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. But, uh, yeah, overall, really like it. It's different. It's, I, I really like it. It's really it, cool. And, it's over, uh, it's the actors the, are really, all the actors are surprising me, like, yep. with, like, how far they go. It's over the top. It's everything I really wanted from this show, uh, in terms of, like, from the source material. And I feel like, you know, the changes they've made were just better suited for TV. Um. I, I really enjoy it a lot. It's uh it's really solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the best superhero TV shows out right now, and uh, this goes this indeed. Is com- this is coming from somebody who reviews literally every CW show out there. So you know, a nice change of pace is always welcome. Mm-hmm. So, um, really enjoyed it. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulties. Y'all won't really notice this because Elizabeth will uh, edit it together. So, uh, which but, by the way, thank you, Elizabeth. Yep. So, uh, note to self, uh, kids if you ever try to report a, record a podcast and you use your AirPods as your microphone, charge your AirPods before recording. <laughs> which, ironically enough, I'm using my AirPods and I had them charging for like an hour before. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did not think about that because I hadn't used them all day, right? So I was like, oh, they'll be fine. I haven't even used them at all. Um, they've been in the case this whole time. Ne- uh, not knowing that I hadn't charged my case in like uh, a few hours. So I was like, oh, shit. Uh, but yeah, so without further ado. The I'm more still- you know. 
Yeah, but without further ado, uh, let's go into plug time. I mean, obviously, we don't have to rush as much because, you know, the timer technically is reset because this is a separate recording. <laughs> uh, but, well, yeah. Honest, honestly, I don't really have anything um, Yeah. Oh, right now. I mean, um, I'll, I'll hope to, at some point, try to, to like, do a, like, uh, catching up with uh, the new Walking Dead World Beyond and hopefully cover that weekly, but uh, the oh. more I not do it, the more it gets away from me. And I was going to say, also, one day at a time, I think it's starting uh, this Monday, uh, the new season on, uh, like, well, the season that was on Pop is releasing on CBS, and I feel like it's super important. Um, Gloria is hinting that this is what's going to determine a season four because uh, Pop is cutting a lot of its programming. So if it's successful on here, it'll just become a primetime CBS show. So and uh, because I mean, I... Uh, look what happened with uh, Sits Creek and Mitch last season. Yep, and also uh, I Star mean, Trek... you can even watch it right now on the Seed, which and, that's weird, Blake. And for example, like uh, Star Girl, you know, uh, DC Universe is uh, now uh, like no longer a streaming app. But because it did so well on the CW, which where it should have been in the first place, if we're being honest, um, mm -hmm. it, it is now getting a season two, which it deserves. So uh, please. It, it's uh, honestly the true like spiritual successor, I feel, for Supergirl. Mm -hmm. But yeah, please uh, support One Day at a Time. Because I did most of my reviews on Blair and Blair is now defunct, I can now... Uh, kind of rewatch the season, and I will be doing those reviews to um, you know help out the show because I love it and I don't want it to be canceled a second time. It's such an important show, not just because you know I'm of Latin heritage, uh, but just because it's a great sitcom. It like very much mm -hmm. gives you what you want from your classic sitcom, but it still feels very modern, right? Um, Highly, yeah. highly recommend. Yeah, indeed. We did. We already did an episode on uh, one day at a time season, uh, season four A. So, you know, we can't do it again. But uh, we we could. Is this going to include four A and four B? Um, four B has not started yet. Uh, they they're filming currently. Oh. They're filming currently. Oh, okay. So I I think by the time like they end. Maybe they'll start releasing 4B, but uh, that hasn't actually been announced yet because you know filming is still going on. Oh, because uh, I because I heard that the animated. Maybe. Oh th yeah, the animated one was done during the pandemic, like which you can tell because the mic quality for Rita Moreno is like really bad. It sounds like she's recording, you know. And I say this while recording on a cell phone. Uh, it sounded like she was recording it on a cell phone. Um, <laughs> and so, so her like everybody else it sounds like a studio mic but hers it sounds like she's talking into a phone speaker like an old person um it's really really bad and it's kind of funny but it's also very cute because it's like she's she's almost 90 so like the fact that they were able to do this is just great and it's a, just a it's a fantastic episode too plus lin-manuel miranda is in it so that's that's a win because also anything Lynn... with him is a win. Which, uh, by the way, speaking of, just FYI, uh, in no, I think it's November. Uh, his Dark Material comes back. Yeah, I'm so excited. Oh man, that's gonna be so which great. If I can catch up in time, I might try to review that too. Uh, yo, that first season was amazing. I I, I need to rewatch the la the last couple. Because uh, I, I don't remember what happens at the end. Um, I mean, I read the book. Yeah, November, November 16th. Mark your calendars. Nice. So, yeah, um, I, I'll be covering one day at a time. Uh, this is Us is coming back very soon. Uh, I am ready to cry my eyes out because uh, the stuff with Mandy Moore is going to be very sad. Uh, but, yeah, very much looking forward to that. The Good Doctor is coming back, so... Uh, we're actually getting back to a normal TV schedule. Yay! I actually get back to and make, I can actually get back to making content again, which is very very exciting. Um, I heard that uh, 
I heard that a good the good doctor is going to address the yeah, pandemic. It, it, yeah, it's a full it's a full pandemic season. Like the the tagline for this season is called uh, Frontline. So like it it talks about being a frontline worker, you know, working at a hospital during the pandemic, all the procedures and such. They even they even like consulted actual physicians and different things like that. So it it'll be very nice. It'll be very interesting to see this season. Uh, honestly, the Good Doctor was one of those shows that had a really bad pilot, but I ended up falling in love with the, uh, when I gave it more of a chance. Uh, so, looking forward to covering the next season. Uh, Superstore is coming back very soon as well, um, and um, America Ferrera will be back uh, for at least the second episode because. Technically, the last episode uh, they were going to film uh, before the pandemic was going to be her final one. So she's actually going to be around for an extra episode to get her actual, like, send-off. So uh, very much looking forward to that. Like I said, we're going to be getting back to a normal fall TV schedule officially uh, coming up very soon. So uh, there will be a bunch of stuff for me coming down the pipeline. And, uh, you know, Brian's slowly working on it. But Brian has plenty of content on TikTok if you want to follow Brian up there. Um, Elizabeth, I'm sure, will uh, leave that in the show notes as well. I'll, I'll also let her know about it, that. But yeah, but that's if you where, wanna... uh, if you like uh, cosplay stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, I know we've had, been very sporadic on these breaks, and I apologize. It's just the more things start to, uh, you know, lessen up a little bit, you know, the more I'm actually, you know, I actually start to do stuff with my family. And so, like, you know, like, been kind of, like, out there doing things. But don't worry, I'm still safe. Uh, also, but, uh, yeah, um, so. also uh, next week we're getting a little spoopy. Yeah, which, uh, you know, we're, we're getting spooky back to back because tech- next week will be the day after Halloween, I believe. Or, or is it? Yeah, it's the day after Halloween. Um, one right? second, I'm, I'm double checking. Um, uh, no. Uh, next, next, what? Oh, fuck. Um, at least the day that we're recording. Mhm. Is going to be recording on Halloween. Oh, that's right. Halloween is on a Saturday, right? That's why I wanted to do it this one. Yeah, because it's a Halloween. It was like gonna. I, I at first it was gonna be this show and then the boys, but then I was like, no, 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 no. We're using this as a Halloween special, and the show I'm talking about, of course, is the Haunting of Bly Manor, uh, the next ser- uh, show in the anthology Haunting series. Um, the which first I've of which been was a- saving because I d- don't want to get like two or more shows confused in my head and I'm really excited to see Jay's already seen it's a it's a big feels trip and it's very different from Hill House uh like thematically uh the same actress who played Nell is the lead character in this and uh hair changes a lot about a person because at first I was like that's not her and then like I looked at her face and I was like oh yeah that definitely is her never mind Um, A, a lot of the actors from Hill House return. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Except for the dad. Uh, but Luke is back. Uh, Luke is back in a very surprising role. Um, uh, the person who plays her uh, twin brother. The flashback dad is back. Yeah, flashback dad is back. But, um, like, old man dad is not back. Um, and I think that that's more in part, though, because of some IRL stuff with the actor. But yeah, uh, it, they're they're kind of pulling a right, like uh, you know, the showrunner is basically pulling kind of an American horror story, where he pulls from like uh, you know, a cast of regular players to play in every season. Mm-hmm. So uh, it'll be re- it'll be really cool. It seems like the Nell actress is his staple actor, um, so it'll be very interesting to see Ryan's thoughts and uh, you know, getting text messages as uh, th- he experiences things. The only thing that I will say that is similar between uh, Bly Manor and Hill House is that it has the same, like, if you pause it, there's a ghost in every frame type deal, which kind of, you know, gives it the same kind of feel for every season, but it's not the same, it's not the same show every time, which I really appreciate. Um, uh, but yeah, very much looking forward to that. And then the week after that, we are doing Lovecraft Country, which has been a phenomenal ride, Uh like seriously you guys 
Like, HBO has been knocking it out of the park. Like, first they had Watchmen last year, and they follow it up with Lovecraft Country. They have so many good shows, like, that, like, portray the uh, Black experience in different, like, lights. And, uh, you know, it's not just made to be woke. It's it's just a really, and really good show. Like that is partly... Obviously, neither of us are. Because... Mm-hmm. Jordan Peele is involved. Oh yeah, Jordan Peele is one of the uh, co-creators and showrunners. So yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be a fun one to discuss as well. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Blind Manor. I'm very much looking forward to talking about. So uh, look forward to that episode. Uh, also, uh, for Book Dragon reviews by other podcasts I do with Mimi, we are going to be doing a Halloween special as well. We will be recording on Friday. Um, and we will be uh, talking about the book version of Coraline and uh, doing a book-to-movie comparison. Nice. So definitely check that out. Give that a listen. It's also going to be on Anchor and all the various other podcast DSPs. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at uh, Jace Caldea. You can find Brian on YouTube at Brian Kersey. Uh, and, um, you know... On Twitch, I mostly play uh, FGO and Genshin Impact, as well as Among Us with the homies, including Brian. And I also play Yu-Gi-Oh! with Brian and our buddy Tony uh, on Friday and, as well. Uh, so last if you're week, into that type of stuff, definitely follow me on week, Twitch. Last week, our, uh, mm-hmm. our uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! was very interesting. Yep, one of one of the most one of the longest duels we've had so far in the history of those mm-hmm. streams. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely, if you're into that stuff, go check it out. Links, again, will be in the show notes. But uh, for real this time, we are out of here. Stay super, and we'll All catch right. you guys on Halloween.